Today, we are gonna see what would happen to Earth if it somehow ended up where it's not supposed to be. We're gonna start by putting Earth where Mercury is and see what happens if it gets burned or whatever. And then we're gonna slowly move it back to where Venus would be, then to Mars and so on till we get all the way to Pluto and we'll see if it freezes and we'll see how habitable Earth is at each level and what happens to it and how will Earth behave with different rings and moons orbiting it. Let's find out. So here's the solar system and you might notice that there is no Earth in this solar system because we are going to place the Earth. So here is Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and we're going to start by replacing Mercury with Earth. So replace. Okay, so now Earth is in Mercury's spot and we're going to play time and let's see what happens here to Earth. Okay, so we may be able to see here's its average temperature. Let's see how that gets affected. So yes, that definitely goes up because it's way closer to the sun. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere or a way to trap the heat, but Earth definitely can trap this heat. You can see just after a few, it's been a couple months and the average temperature is 66 Celsius or 152 Fahrenheit. So it's definitely getting warmer and let's check our life likelihood 80 you could see it's dropping 87 86 oh it looks like yeah look all of the plant life has been burned away so let's just leave it as long as we can and see what happens life likelihood is slowly still dropping actually it looks like it's pretty stable right here at about 77 so the earth might actually still be habitable even though it's a very intense desert world yeah, 358 Fahrenheit or 181 Celsius is the average temperature. So like around the equator, it's over 200 Celsius. So the only way humans could survive this is maybe by going underground at the poles, North or South Pole, or maybe they could live underground in other places. But the Earth doesn't actually like burn up, which is actually pretty surprising. Okay, next here is Venus. So Venus is just slightly closer than Earth. So I honestly think that the worst that's going to happen is like global warming gets worse. We're going to replace Venus with Earth, and I'm pretty sure that Earth's going to be okay. I think even all the life will survive. So let's just take a look at the life likelihood as we watch. So it does slowly go down. It started at like 98 and it dropped to 91. That is it. So it's because they're so similar, Venus and Earth, just Venus has a thicker atmosphere. So all this would really do is raise the temperature a little bit. The average temperature is a pretty warm 135 Fahrenheit. So pretty much the entire Earth is now a desert, but life could still live. I'm sure a lot of species would go extinct, but new species would probably evolve with this heat. Okay, next is Mars. So Mars is gonna be the first planet where I think Earth is gonna get colder than warmer because Mars is further out than Earth is. So let's just replace Mars with Earth. Let's just observe and see what happens. I wonder if it'll get cold enough to freeze the oceans or if it's just going to get a little bit colder. Oh yeah, okay, already look at that. Earth is definitely getting colder. Let's see if this freezes the oceans. Our life likelihood is still 92. It's been a few months. So if like this happened just randomly, humans would be able to survive. They would figure out a way. Okay, so it's stabilizing around 90, but it does freeze the entire ocean. So this is like planet Hoth now, um, but you still can't see the city lights. I'm sure they would just live underground or I don't know, on the surface. Let's see our average temperature. Average temperature is negative 51 Celsius or negative 60 Fahrenheit. That is super, super cold. That's just average. The minimum is negative 231 Fahrenheit or 146 and the max. So the hottest it gets on the entire planet negative 28 celsius negative 19 fahrenheit okay next is going to be jupiter and what's going to be interesting about jupiter is it has a bunch of moons and rings so we'll see how earth behaves with all of that okay so my first thought is that everything is just going to fly away and if that happens i'm going to increase the mass of earth till it starts to pull stuff in okay so yeah you can see the rings start to fly away and it looks like all of the moons are yeah 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 everything is flying away so before everything fully escapes we're gonna do something called make the earth's mass bigger so we're gonna lock the radius so the size doesn't change and we're just gonna turn this up we'll make it 2.15 times the size of jupiter so let's slow down time so it should start to re-pull everything back in maybe unless it's too far gone so there goes the rings it looks like the rings were too far gone but let's see okay so the moons are still in orbit which is good yeah you can see those moons are in a very elliptical orbit now what if we just slowly start to turn this up you can see the orbits get tighter and tighter <gasps> okay ganymede's getting destroyed by the tidal forces do it up some more i want to see some collisions oh i turned earth into a gas giant keep going Okay, it looks like Io is getting really close now. We'll slow down time for this. Oh, I don't know what the heating is that heating from the mass of all of these. It's like as Io gets closer, it heats up. That's kind of weird. Okay, keep going. That should cause a collision with Io. Let's see that. Oh, it's pulling in a lot of gases and stuff. Oh, okay. That was going really fast. That caused 
the whole thing to go blue. Let's keep going. Turn up the mass higher and higher till it kind of absorbs everything. Oh, it turned into a star. Oh no, keep going. Keep going. Yes. Okay, so now it's like a full on star with, oh my gosh, what have I made? Keep going. Okay, now it's gonna eat the entire solar system. Oh, the rings finally came back. I'm surprised it's not a black hole yet. Okay, there it goes. Now it is a black hole and you can see it is eating the entire solar system. It's like a pulsar black hole with its accretion disk. You can see a very vibrant accretion disk on that. It's probably just spinning so fast and it's really dense. And now it is bigger than the whole galaxy. Nice. Okay, I'm actually gonna do a lot more calm approach with Saturn. We're gonna replace Saturn and then add the rings so the rings are in orbit around the Earth. So let's replace it with the Earth. Um, so now Earth is out here where Saturn usually is. So they're the same diameter that Saturn's rings usually are. So you can see how small looks, how small Earth looks compared to the rings but they're in orbit. Let's land. Okay, we can kind of land on the Earth. This doesn't work super well. Now It's not like space engine. And can you even see? You can see a little bit of the rings. Okay, I'm sure the Earth's gonna freeze, so let's watch that. Okay, it's surface locked, so we're locked on one part of the surface as we speed up time. So you can kind of watch the entire Earth start to freeze over time. There we go. And then the oceans will start to freeze from the poles going towards the equator. Unless it all is starting to freeze together, it looks like it. It looks like it's all starting to form some ice. This is fast as I can run it. Yeah, you can see that the water is turning more and more icy. And once it's fully ice, we'll see how the life likelihood is. Okay, it looks pretty icy now. So now we got an icy planet out here with rings and let's check its life likelihood really quick. 75, it is still dropping. So I'm actually gonna clear the rings so we can run this a lot faster and see if it goes down to zero or if life is still, oh, okay, it went down to zero. So Earth, there's a 0% chance that life is still here on this Earth. Okay, for Uranus, instead of replacing it, I'm just gonna put Earth in orbit around it to see how that affects it. If it can somehow get enough heat from the gravitational um, type tidal forces to maybe stay alive longer. So Earth is now in orbit of Uranus. Uh, here it is, it's pretty dark out here. Let's turn on the flashlight and we're gonna speed up time like crazy to see if this freezes or what. Okay, so it does look like it's freezing. Let's watch its life likelihood as we speed this up. 85, 84, it's been years though. It's going one year every second. So every one second that passes is one year in the simulation. It is dropping, but it seems to last longer than it did when it was by itself. You can see as Uranus makes its trip around the sun, Earth is just following Uranus in this orbit. Okay, let's take a look at the temperature. It is pretty cold out here. I don't think Earth is gonna survive this. Okay, for Neptune, we're gonna add more than one Earth. We're gonna add as many as I can before I get bored of this. And we'll see if a single Earth can survive. If one Earth survives, we will call this a success. Okay, that is a good amount. You can see how many there is. If you want to count that, let me know in the comments how many that is. And then we're gonna, we're gonna watch and see what happens as we start to speed up time. Okay, a lot of the Earths are colliding. That's what all that is. And some of them are hitting Neptune, which is kind of interesting to see Neptune lit up like that. Uh, so we'll let the chaos happen. It looks like a lot of the Earths are going to get launched out, never to be seen again. Oh, something affected Neptune and launched Neptune out of the solar system. What happened? Something hit it weird and it is now gone. Um, it doesn't really look like it. It looks like all of the Earths are going to be launched out. Actually, some of these are still in orbit. Some of them did get put in orbit of the sun which means we do have a couple that could still have life. Let's pick this one. This one has life, it's a success. If it doesn't, then we failed. 36.6, that's a success. And finally, we have everyone's favorite dwarf planet, Pluto. Um, we're just gonna replace Pluto with Earth and see what it would be like for Earth. So obviously it's gonna be very, very dark and Earth is super far away from the sun, super, super far. I wonder how long it takes to drop its, it, how long it would take to drop its temperature. So it's already been like two months and it went from about 15 Celsius to zero. It goes from being fully supportive to life in about, it actually still takes a couple hundred years for all of the life to die, which is crazy. That's how much life there is on Earth. But that is Earth in Pluto's spot. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have more things you want me to do to Earth, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.